you. Weren't they wonderful? <laughs> and now you get somebody who's never done this before. So um, it's really marvelous to be here. Oh, God, this is bright. Um, it's really marvelous to be here at the Improv. Improv, as you know, is short for improvisation, which means make it up as you go along, like our policy in Syria. <laughs> Speaking of which, I just hope that you judges are as kind to me as the Accountability Review Board was to Hillary last week. I also want to remind you that we're here in Washington, where a red line is not a red line, where raising the debt ceiling won't raise the debt, and where I'm not using notes. <laughs> I'm using us because I have never done stand-up comedy intentionally. Uh, to show you how desperate they were to get a female contestant to participate in this, um, I'm not even from DC. <laughs> they had to airlift me in from New York. I feel like the comedy marshal plan. Uh, I must say that the pressure is particularly on because I know that this is going to be broadcast on C-SPAN. And I would hate to bomb in front of literally hundreds of viewers. <laughs> Why couldn't they do this on CNN? <laughs> to media ratings. But I want to acknowledge some of my fellow contestants. It's really bright, so I can't see where you're sitting. But Ralph Nader, I wish you hadn't entered this contest. You can't possibly win, and you're only going to siphon votes away from me. What does it feel like being a spoiler? Actually, Ralph just wants to win 5% of your votes tonight so that he can qualify for federal matching funding. Then there is the wonderful Grover Norquist, who got me into this mess. Grover has uh, two beautiful girls. He used to have three, but one of them voted for a tax increase. <laughs> and Grover's teaching style is a little unique. His kids are the only kids who know how to read by learning from the Taxpayer Protection Pledge. I also want to recognize our wonder MC, Matt Cooper, who's hiding back there. Um, Matt has just the right attitude for this kind of event. Um, he doesn't care if he bombs tonight. He's used to being held in contempt. <laughs> Our headliner tonight, whom I've had the great pleasure of viewing online, and I'm really looking forward to hearing him again in person, um, is Dan Ninen. And his mother is from Japan, and his father is from India, which makes Dan the only person I know who can call himself for tech support. <laughs> Crowley for throwing out that first ceremonial joke, which, by the way, you did quite well, particularly the improv part, um, and for not interrupting me with a fact check on Benghazi. Um, but as I said, I live in New York, where we just completed a mayoral primary. Um, the good news is about Anthony Weiner, he lost. The bad news is he just got an iPhone 5S. <laughs> Even if I am a Republican and conservative, I am not a prude. But I think that Wiener's behavior has been absolutely disgraceful. In fact, I am seriously thinking of defriending him. <laughs> but enough about politics. I'm also a mom. I didn't set out to be a mom. I had absolutely no biological clock going off even after I was 30 because babies seem so icky and hairless and self-absorbed. Have you noticed babies actually gaze at their own navels? They are all about themselves. And, but I, you know, I'd learned in talking to people who were smarter and older than I that ultimately the thing that really mattered was kids. So I had three. And that's because I view this as kind of like a carnival game. You know, three shots for a buck, and if one of them doesn't work out, at least you still have two others. <laughs> My kids are wonderful, a lot of the time, um, but there are days when I say, puppies, why couldn't I just get puppies? It would be so much easier, because now I have three monosyllabic teenagers, <clears throat> three credit card borrowing, mom's signature practicing, and I've caught them at this, <clears throat> texting obsessed aliens. Puppies never say, I hate you. Oh, and I need $50. <laughs> True story. Actually happened last week. <clears throat> I grew up reading the Wall Street Journal editorial page. Um, and 
that's a very important part of life if you're on the right. Um, it's for all those ideas we need to communicate that require more than 140 characters. <laughs> um, but here was my nightmare. I dreamt that Rupert Murdoch died, and the News Corp board voted five to three to kill the editorial pages of the Wall Street Journal. I was just so upset that I woke up in a shaking sweat, and my husband said, what's wrong? Thinking that I was going to have, you know, something to tell him about, you know, personal stuff like the kids. And I explained that I had dreamt about the demise of the Wall Street Journal editorial pages, and he said, you are kidding. You are so weird. <laughs> Nobody, including Rupert Murdoch, has that kind of a dream. But he's wrong. Nancy Pelosi has that dream every night. <laughs> Here's another true story. Um, politicians can be very entertaining sometimes. And I recall one that was particularly witty, which was a good thing because he was not much of a politician. I spent one Fourth of July weekend in the Hamptons with a group of people, one of whom was Michael Huffington. And that evening, we were watching this enormous, phenomenal fireworks display. And at this spectacular finale, he turned to me and he said, this reminds me of my campaign for Senate in California. 30 million bucks up in smoke. <laughs> I know that this is, he actually did say that, <laughs> right after Ariana and the babysitter. Um, I know this is a comedy show, but being a conservative, I wanted to leave you with a selection of poetry from 1912 that makes an important statement about family values. <laughs> Susie Lee Dunn fell in love. She planned to marry Joe. She was so happy about it all, she told her pappy so. <clears throat> Pappy told her, Susie gal, you'll have to find another. I just assume your ma don't know, but Joe is your half-brother. <laughs> so Susie put aside her Joe and planned to marry Will, but after telling Pappy this, he said, there's trouble still. You can't marry Will, my gal. Thank you. And please don't tell your mother, but Will and Joe and several more I know is your half-brother. <clears throat> but Mama knew and said, my child, just do what makes you happy. Marry Will or marry Joe. You ain't no kin to Pappy. <laughs>